Professor Dugan, this is my audience. And I will now begin speech number five. Obesity of epidemic proportions. Health is becoming an increasingly larger part of the American landscape. After all, if you don't have your health, what do you have? And while there's such a focus on Americans being healthy these days, it might surprise you to know that we are still struggling with our weight. In fact, just two years ago, the CDC declared obesity an epidemic in America. Maybe you're overweight or struggling with your weight. Who isn't? Maybe you're obese. Or maybe you're one of the fortunate individuals who's at a healthy weight. Regardless of where you fall on the scales, it is important to be knowledgeable and motivated to keep your weight in a healthy range. Today, that's what I hope to motivate you to do. We will discuss a three-part formula to keep your weight down and prevent obesity. With the right combination of your doctor, diet, and exercise, obesity is something you can prevent. PMI is how I measure weight or body mass index. The body mass index is calculated by taking your weight and dividing it by your height, giving us a number. A healthy weight is considered to be between 20 and 25. 25 to 29 puts you in the overweight category, and a BMI of 30 or above is what's considered to be obese. An example is a 5 foot 8 woman is considered healthy at 160 pounds but then later considered overweight at 180 pounds. This again is because we divide the weight by your height. Height stayed the same, but the weight went up, causing an increase in BMI. Now that you know what obesity is, I hope to help you realize what a big problem it is. 34% of American adults are considered obese. 67% of American adults are considered either obese or overweight. That's two out of every three people you meet. And it translates into 130 million Americans. Perhaps more shocking is that one out of every three children is considered overweight or obese. And that translates into 70 million children. Here you can see that we have had obesity in America for a while. These slides show obesity trends from 1985 to 2008. As you can see, the South, geographically, is one of the most obese regions in the United States. Since obesity is such a big problem, some of you might be considering that question, why? What's the big deal? Well, obesity carries with it a lot of life-threatening and serious complications and diseases. There's diabetes, heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, certain types of cancers, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, gallbladder disease, fatty liver disease, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, and gout, just to mention a few. It's the tip of the iceberg, really. And while you might think that the effects of obesity are just physical, since that's all you can see, you'd be wrong. There are many emotional side effects that come with obesity, such as depression, anxiety, social problems, and an increased risk of suicide. And then there are the effects that we don't often consider. The effects obesity has on others. If an individual is obese, they may not be able to do something such as play with their grandchildren or children the way they wish. They might be turned away from local transportation such as a subway, plane, or trolley. Or even have to rely on others for mobility or simple tasks such as putting on socks, depending on the level of obesity. And while obesity is prevalent, and it certainly does carry with it a lot of scary side effects and repercussions, it is preventable, and you can beat it. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to discuss a three-step process to help keep your weight down or prevent obesity if you're already at a healthy weight. First, change your eating habits. Eating a balanced diet can be key. Eat a variety of foods to help you get lots of vitamins and minerals. 
making sure to follow the CDC's recommended eating pattern, seen here in the food pyramid. Also, restrict your calories. Restricting calories through food is a proven method of losing weight. Next, there's everybody's favorite, exercise. Cardiovascular exercise has been proven to reduce cholesterol. And also, exercise can increase endorphins, which creates a positive mood combating depression. And exercise burns calories. Again, reducing your calories can help you lose weight. And while exercise is definitely a vital part of this formula, it's definitely not everybody's favorite. If you find yourself struggling with exercise, try group exercise. Exercising with your friends and family can help you stay motivated and hold you accountable. And then there's changing your routine. Switching it up between swimming, jogging, or even kickboxing can help keep you interested and again motivated in the activity. The last and perhaps most crucial piece of this formula is consulting your doctor. Check with your doctor before you begin or start a new exercise or eating routine. Your doctor knows your personal and health history and will be able to guide you on what type of exercise or caloric restriction is right for you. Working with a medical professional can help maximize your weight loss. In the end, losing weight is up to you. It's not easy and we all stumble sometimes, but it's important to stay focused and motivated. Get the support of your friends, family, and medical professionals, such as a doctor. After all, even a small change can make a big difference. Losing just 5% of your body weight can help you take 15 pounds off of your knees. That's a lot. Losing weight can help keep you on this earth just a little while longer, keeping you healthier and happier. And after all, it's in your hands.